Hi, this is Pastor Bob Yandy, and yesterday we entered into a two-part series, and today's the second part on the shedding and sprinkling of blood, the power of God to save us, but the power of God after we're saved to also bring us back into fellowship with Him. Oh, the wonderful blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go and study it out together. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and something to take notes with and study the Word of God with Pastor Bob Yandian. Hello and welcome back to Student of the Word with Pastor Bob Yandian. I began a series yesterday, I'm going to complete it today, two parts on the shedding and the sprinkling of blood. This is really brought out strongly in the book of Hebrews, and that's what the offer is for this broadcast. In fact, we're going to be going from the passage here in 1 John, where I begin with right to Hebrews chapter 9. And the flash drive I'm offering to you is the entire book of Hebrews. It's going to be a great blessing to you to be studied, to be blessed. And the reason why I'm offering this time, usually there's a book you know that I offer, but it's offered this time in a flash drive. I love flash drive. Plug them into your car and listen. And uh, you know, you can, you, I, I've said this before, but you can listen on a flash drive and usually hear a half a sermon going there, half a sermon coming back from your office or wherever you work. And uh, in so doing, you listen to a whole sermon a day. How wonderful this is. You might live far enough to you could hear a whole sermon going, another whole sermon coming back, but nothing changes like the word of God. Sure beats classic rock, although I like classic rock. Rolling Stones won't do a whole lot for you, but you know, on the other hand, you might be listening to country music. It'll, you know, and that doesn't do a lot for you. And talk radio, that doesn't do a lot for you. But we just kind of see that time in the car as just blank out. Don't think about anything. No, fill it with something that's great, that fills you with the word of God. In fact, there may be times you're driving and just stop and go, oh my gosh, I got to think about that for a while. And all of a sudden you're meditating on the things of God and you dramatically change. One revelation, one revelation from God is worth all the money you put into a library of things. And so again, how wonderful. Turn to 1 John chapter 1, if you would, with me. 1 John 1, we're going to take a look at verse 3, verse 6, verse 7, and verse 9 here of this particular passage. And I talked yesterday, and I'm still continuing on today, the difference between the shedding and the sprinkling of blood. The shedding of blood is what makes you a Christian. And the sprinkling of blood is what makes you in fellowship with God or keeps you in fellowship with God. Or we could say it this way. There's different analogies to the new birth and the daily walk. And that is the difference between the shedding of blood, lots and lots of blood in a bowl, and the daily walk, which is a sprinkling of blood, a drop here, a drop there. It doesn't take the shedding of blood for a Christian to come back into fellowship with the Lord. It takes a drop of the blood and a little bit back are sprinkled. And so there's different analogies. There's positional truth and temporal truth. Positional truth is all the things that are given to you at the new birth. I'm one with Jesus, a child of God. I've been made a priest. Those things don't go away as a Christian when I sin. They're still there. What I'm separated from is not my relationship with God, but my fellowship with God. So positional truth and temporal truth. And in this one, positional truth, the shedding of blood, that is that is Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. If we confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, believe God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. We will have eternal life at that point. And as Jesus said to Nicodemus, he said, when you trust in God, you'll have everlasting life. Everlasting means the moment it started, it goes on forever and forever. Nothing stops my positional truth, but temporal truth. My fellowship with God can be broken by a sin. And that one sin, as opposed to all those sins back there that separated me from eternal life, separated me from God, the rejection of Jesus as Lord and Savior was all taken care of when I accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior by the shedding of his blood. But when it comes to an individual sin in my life on a daily basis, or maybe after a while, it's two or three times a week, maybe then after that, maybe just a month goes by. Again, you grow in the things of God, your goal being not to sin anymore. But anytime you do sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and we confess our sin, that sin, and that one sin is taken care of, or maybe there may be a few little sins around it, are taken care of by the sprinkling of blood, a drop. 
So we come back to it. There's the spiritual birth and spiritual growth. Spiritual birth. I was born into the family of God because of the shedding of blood, but it takes the sprinkling of blood for spiritual growth to occur. There's relationship with God and fellowship with God. Relationship with God, I got that the moment I was born again by the shedding of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But fellowship with God is maintained on a daily basis that as I sin and I do something wrong, I confess that sin. 1 John 1, 9, he's faithful and just to forgive me my sin, cleanse me from all unrighteousness, and that is the sprinkling of blood. I can trust you again the difference between the difference between shedding of blood, lots of it, a sprinkling of blood, a little bit of it. We point out some other things yesterday. That was the fact that uh, the Red Sea is a type of the shedding of blood, but crossing the Jordan River into the promised land is a type of the sprinkling of blood. You can not do either one. I mean, you cannot save yourself, nor when you're out of fellowship, get yourself back. In both cases, it takes the blood of Jesus Christ, but in this case, it takes a bunch of it, and in this case, it takes a drop of it. And so we had the Red Sea, and when God parted the Red Sea and they came across, then they came to the Jordan River. Let's give you the difference between it. I think one of the greatest analogies that I brought out yesterday was this, is that when the uh, priest left the house to go officiate in the temple or in the tabernacle, he took a, a bath. We might say a shower. A shower, a bath. He took, washed himself all over. But by the time he got and walked across the dirt, walked across the sand, walked across that area to get to the uh, to the uh, to the temple or get to the tabernacle, he had to wash his feet. There was a laver there to wash his feet. Bathing is a type of the shedding of blood, and washing your feet in a laver is a type of the sprinkling of blood. This is a type of the new birth where you're washed all over. This is a type of confessing that individual sin. And if you do that, then he'll take care of that individual sin. But what Jesus told, uh, told that day to Peter was this. He said, those who have been washed completely don't need to wash over again. They just need to wash their feet. And so that's the difference between the two. Now, what we have here is the fact that when God split the Red Sea, it's interesting, he split it in both directions. This sea was so deep, so huge, no one could pass through it. That's a type of the shedding of the, that's how much shedding of blood it took to redeem the entire world from the sin of Adam all the way through to, re, to the fact that we're born in sin and we, and we live in sin and our daily life is in sin because we're in Adam and we're therefore in Satan's family. But with the moment we accept Jesus, we're taken out of Satan's family. We are removed from Adam. We are uh, we die in Adam. We're reborn into Jesus Christ. We leave Satan's family. We're now in God's family. You go down the list of all those things that happen, and it took the shedding of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But once I'm in God's family and I commit a sin, it takes a drop. The shedding of blood is seen with the Red Sea, even the color of it. It's a type of salvation and the, and the sea split in both directions and they went through on dry ground. You know what that simply tells you? No sin in the past and no sin in the future will ever make you a sinner again. You are a child of God. And that's why it separates in both directions. After 40 years in the wilderness, they couldn't cross over until they came to the Jordan River and they crossed through the Jordan River. But it's interesting to do that, that the priest went out there first and stepped in the water with their shoes. Oh, the type of foot washing. You washing of feet is not a type of salvation. No, it's a type of fellowship with God. They were already past the Red Sea. They were past the shedding of blood. And now came the sprinkling of blood. And they put the priest out there first. And the priest had to put their foot in, first of all. The, the sole of their shoe had to touch it. And the moment it did, it backed up in one direction past. It didn't go future. It went past. You can't confess today tomorrow's sins. You can't say, well, I'm going to confess my sins today. The Lord's going to take care of me all the way till I go to heaven. No, that happened back at the Red Sea. It parted in two directions. This parted in one direction, parted back. In fact, it stopped and a wall built up and that wall went all the way back to the city of Adam. Go look it up. The water backed up to the city of Adam. You know what that's simply saying? There's not a sin in all mankind that ever comes up to this point that can separate you from fellowship with God. But tomorrow's sins must be confessed tomorrow. Tomorrow, you must put your foot back in the water on that day and see the water back up again. Because what happens is there's one crossing of the Red Sea, but when it comes to fellowship with God, there comes sometimes more than once a day. You commit a sin, Father, I've sinned. Father, I did wrong. It's forgiven that quickly. And I mean, it backs up. There's not a sin. That's why I'm not too strong on the teaching on today on, you know, these uh, sins that are in your life, you know, and that you've got uh, sins that have come down through all the relationships and stuff in past life. And in other words, there's none of that. When it comes down to this, there is no such thing 
as generational sins. It's all backed up back all the way to the city of Adam and you're taken care of back there. So the disease is back there and the sins back there. Do you think, well, I'm living today and the sins of what my parents did years ago. No, everything back there is taken care of, but nothing tomorrow. You've got to do that again when tomorrow comes. That's the difference again between the shedding of blood and the sprinkling of blood. Let's take a look at it in 1 John chapter 1, verse 3. What we have seen and declared to you, so we may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Notice this, we not only have a relationship between each other, and that is fathers and children and things like that, but we have fellowship one with the other. And we also have a fellowship with the Father. I have a relationship with the Father because I'm a child of God. But I have fellowship with him and we have communion with each other and we get along with each other and there's no sins between us. If there is, I'm supposed to confess it. It says in verse six, if we say we have fellowship with him and then walk in darkness or in any sin at all, we're lying and we don't practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, this is the daily walking in the light of what we know as he is in the light, we have fellowship. Notice it's not relationship, that's taken care of. That's the shedding of blood. Here we have the sprinkling of blood. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with the other and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son continually cleanses us from all sin. If I walk in what light I have, if I commit a sin unknowingly, it's automatically cleansed. Verse nine goes on to say, if we confess our sins, this is known sins. When we do something we know is a sin and we confess it, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And then he goes a step further. Then if you've done anything you don't know about, they'll also be cleansed. You'll be cleansed from all unrighteousness. Oh, the grace of God. What we're talking about here in 1 John chapter 1 is not the Red Sea we're talking about. The, we're talking about the Jordan River here. We're talking about the backing up of the Jordan. We're not talking here about relationship. We're talking about fellowship. We're not talking here in this verse about the shedding of blood. We're talking about the sprinkling of blood for our life daily. Let's talk about the difference again between shedding of blood and sprinkling. Look at Hebrews chapter nine. Again, what we're offering is a flash drive on the book of Hebrews. This will be brought out in there. Let's take a look at verses 19 through 22 of Hebrews chapter nine. After Moses, spake every precept to all the people. According to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water, scarlet wool and hyssop, and sprinkled the book. That's the scroll. And all the people saying, this is the blood of the everlasting covenant, which God has joined to you. Even more, he sprinkled both the tabernacle, all the vessels of the ministry with blood, almost everything are by the law purged with blood. Without shedding of blood, there's no remission. Notice that the sprinkling of blood was to cleanse the different articles in there, but the shedding of blood was for the remission of sins. When are my sins remitted? At the new birth, there's the shedding of blood, but shedding is mentioned one time in these verses of scripture, but sprinkling, sprinkling, sprinkling over and over again. Why? The blood of Jesus Christ was shed one time for me. He will never go back to the cross again and do that again. But in my personal life, there's the sprinkling of blood that occurs over almost all my life, my lifetime span after this, because why? Even after I'm born again, I can commit a sin. I can mess up, maybe not intentionally, but I've done something wrong, lost my temper, all this. But you know what? I simply confess it and go my way. The sprinkling of blood takes care of it. I'll see you right after halftime. The book of Hebrews compares and contrasts Jesus to key characters and events from the Hebrew Bible. In these comparisons, his superiority is fully revealed. He is greater than the angels, the Torah, Moses, the Promised Land, the priesthood of Melchizedek, the priesthood of Aaron, all the sacrifices, and even the Old Covenant. The letter to the Hebrews makes it very clear that only one person deserves to hold the primary place in our lives. While we are busy idolizing our earthly interests and fleshly motives, Jesus offers us a better position, a better priest, a better covenant, a better hope, and a better sacrifice. In the 42 audio lessons on this USB flash drive, Bob Yandian does an extensive verse-by-verse -verse teaching of the book of Hebrews and makes the Word of God easy to understand for every believer. To order Hebrews flash drive, visit bobyandian.com. Theology Simplified is a practical guide to foundational biblical truth. Basic doctrines are not difficult, but easy to understand. They often become disguised as complicated or deep-sounding words, but the definitions are simple. 
Using straightforward vocabulary and down-to-earth examples, Pastor Bob makes complex theological concepts clear and practical. Eight crucial doctrines of the Christian faith are demystified. Redemption, justification, sanctification, reconciliation, predestination, election, propitiation, and glorification. These eight precepts, essential for all believers to understand, come to light as you read and arrive at a deeper understanding of the finished work of Jesus Christ. This understanding will allow you to walk in more maturity and stability in your Christian life. To order Theology Simplified, visit our website at bobyandian.com. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity and faithfulness, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit our website at bobyandian.com and click on Partnership. Again, let's take a look at this. Shedding of blood comes first. That's toward God. The shedding of blood is not toward me. It's toward God. God now sees I've been forgiven for my sins. I'm now a child of God. But sprinkling is second. That's toward me. The shedding of blood is for the remission of sins, the new birth. But sprinkling is for daily cleansing, for fellowship so that I can grow. Without 1 John 1, 9, we could not grow. People often say, well, 1 John 1, 9, that's just a license to sin. I have found this. Christians don't need a license to sin. They're going to do it anyway. Christians sin. So 1 John 1, 9 is not a license to sin. It's a license to serve. I couldn't serve God without it. The moment I commit a sin, it stops my serving with God, and I can't do anything outside of confessing it to get rid of it. I can increase my offering, but that's just that's just the flesh. I can attend church more, but you know what? Sinners do that. It doesn't make them saved. What makes you think as a Christian you can do that and not come back into fellowship? The same thing that got you into the new birth is the same thing that gets you back into fellowship, the blood. It just takes a whole lot less this time. It just takes confessing that sin. He's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you you from all unrighteousness. Let's talk about the shedding of blood. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 28. Find it while you do, and you're finding that. Again, I want to thank all of you who are my, my I, I say this quite often, those of you who are my partners, thank you and bless you. You have made this possible. Not only has God made this possible, you've made it possible. Matthew 26, take a look at verse 28. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. This is the new birth. Notice, shed for many. When it comes to sprinkling of blood, it's just for me. But the shedding of blood is for many. And what happens is, I mean, millions can accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior at one point, and that's the shedding of blood, and it's for the remission of sins. But the sprinkling of blood, look at Hebrews chapter 9. Go back there to Hebrews again. Look, Take a look at verses 12 through 14. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place. How many times is the blood, again, going to be shed one time? But neither by the blood of bulls and goats, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having attained eternal redemption for us. That's the shedding of blood. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered to him without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. What is the sprinkling of blood for in verse 13? It's to cleanse my conscience. The new birth cleansed my spirit. But when I do something wrong, my conscience begins to go, no, Bob, and starts this wrestling match with me. And your conscience says you've sinned. You need to confess it to God. And then your anger rises up from your flesh and says, no, I don't. It's not that bad. And you know what? Go with your conscience and then purge your conscience by the sprinkling of blood. 
As a Christian, when you sin, of course your conscience condemns you. Of course this thing comes upon you and you know you've done wrong. Why are you trying to cover it up? Why are you trying to pull the wool over your eyes or especially the wool over God's eyes? Trying to convince God it wasn't that bad. If it's not of faith, it is of sin. And that verse is directed toward believers, not unbelievers. He now says, purge your conscience from dead works. So now you can serve the living God without first John 1, 9, without the ability to confess your sins, without the sprinkling of blood in the life of somebody who's been cleansed by the shedding of blood, there is no way you're going to serve God. It's impossible to serve God without being able to get rid of those daily things in your life. Let's talk about the death angel and the destroyer. Exodus chapter 12, look at verse 22 and verse 23. Here it says in chapter 12, notice this, not only did they have the shedding of blood at the point of um, getting out of Egypt, but they also had the sprinkling of blood. And that means, any listen, even at the shedding of blood, if there's sin along the way, there's got to be a sprinkling of blood. But notice in Exodus chapter 12 and verse 22 and verse 23, you shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin. This is what has been shed and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. None of you shall go out the door of his house until morning for the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. You know what this is? It's simply saying that the shedding of blood protects us from God. I am no longer the enemy of God. I am the child of God. I'm a friend of God. I'm no longer headed toward hell. I'm headed toward heaven. No longer am I a sinner. Now I'm a saint. And this is saying by the shedding of blood, this is how God sees me. But notice this, without the blood on the doorpost, I can open up my door to the destroyer, which is Satan. God will never destroy me as a Christian. Only Satan can destroy me, but I can protect myself from him by making sure the blood is over the doorpost. And every time I sin and refuse to confess it, I'm opening up my life and allowing Satan, the destroyer, to come into my house. He can bring sickness. He can bring disease. He can't separate me from God. No, that can't happen. This whole passage that I'm just not quoting is repeated again in 1 Corinthians 10, 10, that it was the destroyer that came in throughout the time they were in the desert and came in and brought in the snakes and brought in the serpents that bit them and many of them died but because they would not confess their sins. And finally, after a number of them died, they repented and came back to the Lord and that was, got rid of the snakes that were there. The children of Israel first shed the blood into a bowl then sprinkled it over the doorpost. The shedding of blood protected them from God but the death angel about to go into Egypt and kill the firstborn but the sprinkling of blood over the doorpost protected them from the destroyer. That's Satan who would harm them. So God gave Egypt 400 years to repent and they did not. And God finally came in and destroyed them. How? Because of their rejection of Jesus Christ, 400 years they wouldn't repent. God protected Israel and came and destroyed them. And many of them died, their cattle died. And finally, Pharaoh and his entire army died at that time. So as the Lord passed over on his way to Egypt, he looked for the sprinkled blood. And what happened in Exodus 12, 13, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The plague will not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So we have the new birth in our daily walk and we have daily cleansing of sins. Again, this was brought out. I brought this out in bathing and foot washing. If you want to go read that sometime, John chapter 13 verses four through 11 tells about how the Jesus Christ had a towel wrapped around him in a basin and came to wash the disciples' feet. And immediately uh, the first one to speak up was Peter. And he said, oh Lord, no, 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 not just my feet. Wash me all over. And Jesus said, no, you've been washed all over. I just need to wash your feet. Listen to what Jesus said in verse 10. Jesus said to him, he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet and is completely clean. And you are all clean, but not all of you. He simply said, one of you has not taken a bath. We know who that was. That was Judas. For he knew what who betray him. Therefore, he said, you are not all clean. So bathing and foot washing. Again, bathing requires much water. I mean, think about this. You're going to wash your feet. You don't need much. But if you're going to take a bath, I mean, you fill up the entire tub. Or else you take a shower and lots and lots and lots of water comes across you. So again, the shedding of blood requires much blood. Bathing required much water. Foot washing required very little water. And the sprinkling of blood requires very little blood. 
It comes back to it again. Salvation requires much of the blood of Jesus. Confession of sins requires very little, only a few drops. The feet of the priest touched Jordan before entering. So we come back to it again. God versus Satan. In bathing or the shedding of blood, we are protected by God and protected from God. We will never face his wrath. Neither do we ever face his condemnation again, but foot washing or confessing of sins protects us from Satan. Your feet come into contact with the world in Satan's domain. The sprinkling of blood did not protect Israel from the death angel, that was Jesus Christ, but from the destroyer, that was in Exodus chapter 12, verses three and 24. The same blood which was shed was also used to sprinkle. There's not a reshedding of blood. No, it was all done back there when Jesus was the cross, but it's like the blood of Jesus there in a bowl, in a basin. And every time I, as a Christian, say, Lord, I've blown it. Lord, I, I did, you know, I did it. I should not have done it, but Lord, I can't hide behind this thing. The devil made me do it. No, I decided to do it. Satan tempted me. I fell for it, but Lord, I now confess that sin. So now we take that blood and it's sprinkled, but it was shed back at the cross of Jesus Christ. And even though it's been shed, there's still power in it today. So the blood had to be shed to have the blood to be sprinkled. This is why only a believer can confess his sin because the believer sprinkles the blood which was first shed for his sin. This is why 1 John 1, 9 cannot possibly be for a sinner, only for a Christian, only for a believer. This is the beauty of the verse of scripture. You know, when I was a sinner, I had no access to God and God makes one access for me. And that access to get to God is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. By confessing Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I have access to God. That's how I do it. But after I'm born again, I don't have to have the shedding of blood anymore. After I'm born again, I become a priest unto God. I'm not a priest as a sinner. First John 1, 9 can only be practiced by a priest. And a priest can come boldly before before the throne of God. This is not a sinner because a sinner cannot come before the throne of God. He has to come through the blood, first of all, be made a Christian, be made a believer, be made a child of God, and also made into a priest before God. Now he has access to the throne of God. First John 1, 9 could not possibly be written to sinners. It's written to priests. It's part of our priesthood to confess our sins. So as a priest, Bob can come to the great throne of God and I can come I'm boldly before the throne of God and there confess my sins. I am not a sinner trying to get saved. I am a believer coming back into fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So it was sprinkled around and over the doorpost. The doorpost is access or entry into our earthly life. Jesus stands at the door of a church's life and a believer's life and confession of sins protects us from sickness, from poverty, from personal destruction. Revelation 3.20 says this. Here is 1 John 1, 9 in demonstration. Revelation 3.20, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens up the door, I will come in and dine or fellowship with him and he with me. Jesus was not saying, you bunch of sinners on the inside. No, I used to be in there. You've now forced me to the outside. I used to be in there with you. Now I'm at the door knocking and I'm simply saying, open the door and let's have fellowship together again. Not only is that true of a church, it's true of an individual. I'm here to tell you if you've sinned, Jesus at the door knocking as a Christian telling you, come on, Come on, use your priesthood. Confess your sins to me that I will come in and fellowship with you and you and I will have the good times we used to have before. See you tomorrow. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts by visiting our website at bobyandian.com. You can also join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. If you would like to contact Bob Yandian Ministries, visit bobyandian.com and click on Contact. To contact us by mail, use the address on your screen. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.